Hi, I'm Reverend Amy. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for joining us for worship. We're glad to be together, even though apart. We continue our celebration of the Easter season with some striking images to accompany us through these days. God as rock, refuge, shelter. Sometimes we speak of Christ being a cornerstone. Here are the cornerstones of the church. How do these images of God speak to us? How do we carry them with us? So let's take a deep breath. Let's center ourselves and prepare to worship God together. We gather together to worship God, our rock and our redeemer, the one in whom we find refuge. You are our rock and our fortress, O oh God. Into your hands we place our lives. Loving God, we confess that at times we don't know the way. We have become lost in fear, scattered in hopelessness. We have forgotten how to listen to your voice. We demand signs that this will end, answers to how to move forward, because uncertainty is too heavy a burden. And yet you have shown us the way, the truth, and the life. Through your Son, Jesus, you have shown us the way of love. You have shown us that our acts of love are powerful, able to overcome fear and hopelessness. Remind us of who you have called us to be 
and what you have called us to do, love one another. In the name of Christ, who has shown us the way, we pray all things. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. We know the way, the truth, and the life is love, and that love has been made known to us through Christ Jesus. We are forgiven, loved, and restored. In Christ, we find rest, we find hope, and we are not alone. We belong to Christ and to one another. Live into Christ's ways of love and peace, and God will see you through. Amen. Good morning, friends. I'm so glad you could join me here today. It's Mother's Day, and it reminded me of a special nursery rhyme that my mom taught me, and we used to say in church. So let me teach it to you. For some of you, you might already know this, and we'll review it. And for some of you, it's going to be brand new. So why don't you come look at my hands, and I'm going to show you how we do this rhyme. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to interlace our fingers in the back, and we're going to put our thumbs up here together. And we're going to say, this is the church. This is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. We used to do this all the time when I was a little girl. We had to do it quietly in the seat, so. This is the church. This is the steeple. Open the doors and see all the people. Today, I learned there's a whole new verse to go with this. Would you like to hear it? It's called, You Can Have a Church Without the Steeple but you can't have a church without all the people. Hmm. Wait a second. I'm in church. Where are all the people? Where's our church? It turns out the church isn't just our building. The church is made up of the people. People like you and me who love Jesus. And right now it might seem like, where is Jesus if we can't come to church? But remember, Jesus is always with us. He's in our hearts and he's wherever we go. So right now while we're staying at home, Jesus and the church are with us at home. And when the time comes and we can come back together to our building, the church will be here with us again. But in the meantime, let's check in on some of our friends who make up the church. I hope you were as happy to see your friends as Lacey was to see Finn. It's great to see everyone happy, healthy, and well. For your Sunday School lesson today, we have a couple of options. You can go into the comments on our YouTube page and get the link for the We Are Spark House Sunday School lesson. It's called Family Sunday School, and this week it's about God's house, just like we talked about God's house today. There's another option, though. Today is Mother's Day, and maybe for Mother's Day, you can do something special for your mom. There are links to coloring pages for Mother's Day and some Mother's Day crafts also in our YouTube links. And you could just do something spontaneous, like clean up after yourself, or write her a card, or give her a hug and tell her you love her without having her to ask you. In the meantime, a message for all you moms, you are doing a great job. Happy Mother's Day. Who could have believed that we would have spent the last two months at home with no outlets for our energy and creativity outside of the house. You are doing a great job and we love you, we miss you, and we can't wait to see you again. Have a great week. The prophet Isaiah said, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Mothering God, we cherish your great love for us. 
As the creator, you made us in your image and you called life from earth and water. In baptism, we were born anew from water and spirit and your love and care are made known to us as we grow in faith. We give you thanks for those who have been mothers and stepmothers in our lives, for grandmothers and aunts and all those who have been like mothers to us, who have shown us your comfort, your courage, peace and strength. God of peace, we acknowledge that this day that was originally created for mothers grieving the loss of their children in war, we grieve with all who have lost a child, who have struggled with fertility issues, who have had to give up children in foster care and adoption. May your love surround us and hold us in these tender times. Loving God, we hold tenderly the ones who have difficult relationships with their mothers. For those who have separated in relationship, we weep with those who are missing their mothers. In these difficult times, O oh God, we know the distance that separates us, the physical distance for safety, the distance of time for those gone, the distance of fading memories. We know the distance of estrangement. We pray for healing wherever possible, O oh God, for forgiveness wherever possible, and for the hope that you bring in lives. Hold us, loving parent, in your healing hands on this day. Amen. The psalm today mentions rocks. God is described many times in the Bible as a rock, as something that is a solid foundation and a shelter in times of distress. Hear the trust of the writer, even as hard times are upon them. I take refuge in you, Lord. Please never let me be put to shame. Rescue me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Deliver me quickly. Be a rock that protects me. Be a strong fortress that saves me. You are definitely my rock and my fortress. Guide me and lead me for the sake of your good name. Get me out of this net that's been set for me because you are my protective fortress. I entrust my spirit into your hands. You, Lord, God of faithfulness, you have saved me. My future is in your hands. Don't hand me over to my enemies, to all who are out to get me. Shine your face on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Our future is in the hands of love, in the heart of God. Jesus, as God in the flesh, helps us to know that we are in the house and family of God. He called God Abba a name that a child would call a parent in the language Jesus spoke. God was not distant, but a parent who loves tenderly, protects faithfully, and wants us to know intimately, hear Jesus comfort the disciples who are distressed at the thought of living life without him. Don't let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith in me as well. In God's house, there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I was going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you. And then I will come back to take you with me. That where I am, there you may be also. You know the way that leads to where I'm going. Thomas replied, but we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I myself am the way, I am truth, I am life. No one comes to Abba God but through me. If you really knew me, you would know Abba God also. From this point on, you know Abba God and you have seen God. Rabbi, Philip said, 
Show us, Abba God, and that will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you don't know me? Whoever has seen me has seen Abba God. How can you say, show us your Abba? Don't you believe that I am in Abba God and God is in me? The words I speak are not spoken of myself. It is Abba God living in me who is accomplishing the works of God. Believe me that I am in God and God is in me or else believe because of the works I do. The heart and truth of the matter is anyone who has faith in me will do the works I do and greater works besides. Why? Because I go to Abba God and whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that God may be glorified in me. Anything you ask in my name, I will do. Jesus himself cried out to God from the Hebrew scriptures that were his holy texts. And what we read today, into your hands I commit my spirit. This is the kind of relationship with God that he wanted us to have, to be able to let go of all our need to control the future, our anxiety about what is going to happen, which we cannot know right now, and let God comfort us. Jesus reminded his disciples, and he reminds us to trust in God. When our hearts are troubled, it is okay to be troubled, but we also know that even God's love, steadfast, that even while our minds may be working overtime, our hearts can rest assured in God's love. Steadfast love is what God shows and what we are called to offer each other. In this way, we also are the presence of God. Through Christ, so that others may know this comfort of the Divine One. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten God alone fills us. If I'm honest, John's gospel loses me right off the bat. Jesus starts out saying, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. If you don't have a troubled heart right about now, I'm a little concerned for you. I'm actually more than a little concerned for you. There is so much to be concerned about on so many fronts. If you don't have a troubled heart, I'm worried for you about what kind of heart you do have. The news that finally was brought to light this week about Ahmad Arbery, a young man who was killed, lynched essentially, for jogging while black, should trouble us to the very core of our being. And more than trouble us, it should shake us into action to change our world, where this is less exceptional news and more, sadly, the way that white supremacy operates in our society. There is an Irish saying, it is in the shelter of each other that the people live. May we all continue to live into that so one day all may find that they have shelter and safety in this world. In this pandemic, there is so much that is unknown these days. It is troubling. So much of what we do know is troubling. What scientific models and timelines show us is troubling. The lives affected by job loss and food insecurity is deeply troubling. So if you have an achieved and untroubled heart, I am concerned for you. Our hearts, a sense of compassion is what connects us to each other. And our connection to each other is what will pull us through this crisis. This section of John's Gospel is part of what is called the Farewell Discourses. Jesus is imparting wisdom to his followers for a time when he will no longer be with them. 
Jesus is trying to preemptively care for them in a deeply unsettled time of grief and insecurity. I think that is a time that we can relate to. He starts with the seemingly problematic, do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus goes on to say, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? In some translations, this is about rooms in a heavenly mansion. Now Jesus might be starting to pique our attention. If we need to stay at home, a mansion might just be the ticket. Who among us hasn't had a fantasy about another room or two to grab a little extra space, maybe even to get a little extra space away from our loved ones? As the weeks wear on, just about all quarters start to feel like tight quarters. And if you're dealing with family violence, those quarters were tight from the beginning. So a heavenly mansion with many rooms for social distancing, what a wonderful metaphor Jesus is offering us. If we look at the psalm for today, we see some familiar images too. God is a rock, a sheltering place, a refuge. Do you find those images comforting? How do you react to being home a lot? Some are going stir crazy and some are nesting and enjoying it. And there are all of the variations in between. What kind of foundation is your home built on? What kind of foundation are you built on? We all have different starts in life. There's a lot to be said for a solid foundation under you and around you. Think of the story of the three little pigs. Pigs building houses made of straw, sticks, and bricks. And the big bad wolf determined to blow them over. Wasn't it the last little pig who built his house of brick, something nice and solid that could withstand the huffing and puffing of the wolf? Certainly in COVID times, the idea of a menacing, attacking stranger blowing on your house is especially scary. So something solid and substantial made of the earth, grounded by the solid earth, makes sense that it will keep you safe. We talk about being grounded a lot these days ways to soothe our troubled hearts. And nature is one of the primary means we have for that. Get out and take a walk. Breathe some fresh air. Feel the warmth of the sun. Hear some moving water. Feel grounded by the solid earth. So this image of God as a steady rock can be reassuring. Do you have someone in your life that you call your rock? Steady, secure, stable? Those are pretty nice qualities. What's your rock, your bedrock that's getting you through the pandemic? For many of us, it was our faith in going to church in a building, our church building that we think of as home. It's really hard that we can't do that right now. Of course, we know that a church is not a building, but we also know that as human beings, we need homes. We need shelters for both body and soul. So we are a little out of balance right now. We've got a lot of house home and a whole different form of spiritual home. It's kind of interesting that our soul home through virtual church is now primarily in our home homes. Physically, we need shelter, but I find it comforting to think that God knows that we also need spiritual shelter. We have a God who knows that we need a hiding place. It's comforting that we have a God who knows that about us. There's something about that need that runs deep in human nature. Think of playing hide and go seek with children, building blanket forts. Think of tree houses. Think of the stories of buried treasure and the fun of scavenger hunts, or even the thrill of finding hidden treasure in flea markets or in something you just thought was junk on the Antiques Roadshow. Last summer, when we took a volunteer work trip to Bosnia, we slept in a castle. It was really more of what we think of as a fortress built between 1756 and 1821 on a Roman foundation. We went on a tour of the passageways beneath the castle that were only recently rediscovered. They were very dark and cold, and your imagination could run wild thinking of what might have happened there. We also learned about the legend of a network of tunnels starting under our castle that people traveled that kept them safe in old times of war and unrest. We even heard that our castle was connected to another castle nearby. 
Quite intrigued by this, on our way home, we asked to stop and see the other castle on our way out of town. It was a 40-minute car ride on winding roads to the top of an impressive mountain peak, Dschrebernik, a very old castle built in 1333. So we sadly gave up on the literal truth of this fantastic legend, but the story and the urge in the human soul says a lot about our deep need for shelter. How wonderful it is we have a God who knows that we need a place of shelter, a God who knows we need rest, refuge. There is a wonderful old folk tale about the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and young Jesus. When the Magi go home by another way after following the star and visiting Jesus, Herod, in a fury, sends out his troops to kill all of the males under two years old. The Holy Family takes refuge in a cave. A spider takes pity on them and starts spinning a web in the entrance of the cave. When Herod's soldiers came by looking for Jesus, they saw the intricate spider web over the entrance. They said, look, no one has been here and gone in this cave forever. And they moved on and spared Jesus. When we think of that image of God as a rock, a refuge, can we think of the flip side of it? What do we see when we turn the image over? Do we see rocks that are worn smooth by flowing water? Do we see rock formations carved by the movement of the wind after eons? Do we see small plants sprouting and growing, breaking apart seemingly impenetrable rocks? Do we see our need for a soft place to land in the midst of seeking strength and stability? Do we see Jesus, our rock, our cornerstone, but also human, weepy, weeping, angry, suffering, loving, the child of a human mother? We think of God as a refuge, a rock, as a strong shelter. How do things shift if we think of it as something that God does? God who gives refuge, God the sheltering one. It might give us clues about how we can be co-creators with God, how we can follow God. Does that mean that we could give shelter to someone in need? that we could be a refuge for someone who is endangered or exhausted. And what about the earth? The earth, our mother, who gives us shelter and life, can we in turn give life back to her? Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Perhaps the question for us today is, what do we do with our troubled hearts? Will we confront the evils we see and work to bring about new life? Or do we need to retreat? Do we need both? It's not either or after all, it's both and. We need refuge and we need to be refuge with God for others. Will we seek shelter and protection for our bruised hearts in God's love? Do we believe that God's love is stronger than our fears? Can we live into this belief? Strengthened by our sheltering in place with God, can we live as if we believe this until we feel it to be true in our lives? God's love is stronger than our fears. Let me close today with a prayer written by Padraig Otuma, a place for shelter and shadow. We know that sometimes we are alone and sometimes we are in community. Sometimes we are in shadow, and sometimes we are surrounded by shelter. Sometimes we feel like exiles in our land, in our language, and in our bodies. And sometimes we feel surrounded by welcome. As we seek to be human together, may we share the things that do not fade, generosity, truth-telling, silence, respect, and love. And may the power we share be for the good of all. We honor God, the source of this rich life, and we honor each other, story full and lovely. Whether in our shadow or in our shelter, may we live well and fully with each other. Amen. Show.
shelter of the Lord, who abide in God's shadow for life. Say to the Lord, my refuge, my rock in whom I trust, and God will raise you up on eagles' wings. the sun and hold you in the palm of God's hand. The snare of the fowler will never capture you and famine will bring you no fear. Under God's wings you'll God's faithfulness, your shield, and God will raise you up on eagles' wings, bear you on the breath of dawn, make you to shine like the sun, and hold you in the palm of God's hand. Generous God, here are our gifts of time, here are our gifts of talents, here are our gifts of money, building stones for your kingdom, awaiting shaping and placing within your loving purpose. Amen. During our time of prayer today, we will pause and let those prayers that are upon our hearts be lifted up by the breath of God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our rock, you are the fortress that saves us through the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the cornerstone, the living stone, precious in your sight upon which his church is built. As God's people, we lift up today in prayer all the joys and concerns that are upon our hearts. So merciful God, who shelters us and guides us, we give you thanks for. God, who comforts us, receive those who are fearful and lonely. God, your love is steadfast. Be a refuge for the ill the dying, and those who care about them. God of righteousness, we ask for your wisdom and ways of justice to prevail in our community, this nation, and your world. God who seeks our trust, Grow us and guide us in your ways that are life-giving in your world. And hear us as we continue in prayer, praying as Jesus taught his disciples, and now, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he hath said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled? Fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee aid. I'll strengthen and help thee and cause thee to stand upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand. The soul that on Jesus still leans for repose, I will not, I will not desert to its foes. That soul through all hell should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Have a good week. Let's stay rock solid in our commitment to care for each other in these challenging days. May God give us patience and strength in the days ahead to stand firm and do what needs to be done for the good of all. See you here next week.